artist do I have in the house tonight? Raise your hand. Tonight, this morning. <laughs> you see where my hand is at? How many activists do I have in the house this morning? Okay. How many people identify as both artists and activists? So we have some artists in the house. So I'm going to talk about the community, the artist community. We are a community of people, it's particularly I'm talking about people who teach young people, who believe that art and activism have a very powerful place in our world. Um, my presence with you this morning is evidence that a crime against humanity occurred. I am a descendant of enslaved people. Um, I'm a descendant of people who were brought here against their will, who came to this country, um, who, who struggled, who thrived, who created an amazing culture, an intellectual culture, an artistic culture that is unrivaled. Like you can see, I'm very proud to be a black woman up here today. Um, and because of that, um, I also understand that my place is to be a part of the struggle that my place is to make sure that freedom comes, and that's my passion. Uh, so a lot of us who teach for social justice, um, people are like, okay, well, well, what happens when you teach young people for social justice? What happens when you teach them about artivism? They're gonna go over and like turn on the tables. They're gonna go over and just be riotous. Uh, so there's a couple of things I want you all to understand about artivism and about social justice. Uh, social justice is rooted in what this picture represents. Social justice is rooted in love, okay? That you love people so much that you want everybody to be free. That you love people so much that you're willing to fight, that you're willing to protest, that you're willing to create art, that you're willing to start hard conversations to make sure that everyone is just as free as what you want to be. So the first thing about social justice and artivism I want you to know is love is the foundation of the work. Um, the next foundation is community. We believe in the power of community. We believe that communities are um, abundant with not only creativity and potential, but this is where change will happen. Um, we believe in young people. Um, at Groundswell and a lot of arts education and social justice organizations around the country, young people are at the center of what we do and they are powerful. A lot of times people say, oh, we want to work it this way because we want to give young people a voice. Young people have a voice. Your work as an educator is to amplify that voice. Also, people will always say sometimes, oh, you know, we want to work with at-risk youth. Or we want to work with you know, young people who don't have very strong families. That is you putting your own ideas on young people, right? If we think about it, everybody has some kind of at risk. It's not just young people from marginalized communities. You're talking about black and brown young people when they say that, when we use that word. Um, it depends on your, what you're at risk for based on where you live. I mean, I would argue that Donald Trump was an at-risk youth, right? <laughs> Somebody didn't teach him about empathy, right? Somebody didn't teach him how to treat people, right? So what did he teach him? Important social justice values, right? But because he came from a rich community, no one sees people on the Upper East Side as being at risk. Right? If you live in one community, you may be at risk for you know, higher rates of incarceration. You know, somebody in this community might you know, steal your wallet. Somebody in that community might steal your pension. <laughs> might break down whole countries. Right? We don't see them as being at risk. Right? So when we're thinking about social justice, it's important that we understand that it's for everybody. Um, art. Art as a vehicle. See, some people think of art for art's sake, and I'm happy to talk about art for art's sake, and I love it. But as an artist, I believe that art is a liberatory tool. It is a tool for liberation. And I'm not saying that in just terms of theory. As I said at the beginning of the talk, I am a descendant of enslaved people. I'm a descendant of people who understood that art can free them. 
that a song can give a message of when we're gonna run, that a dance can give a message of the same thing, that, that uh, a quilt can have a pattern that can be a map. See, black people have been doing this work, so it's not just a theory, this is truth. Um, these are some of the pieces um, from the organization that I work with. Um, this is um, Fall of Oppression. Another kind of uh, thing that people say, well, when you're working with young people and they're art and you're trying to do activism, like, which one are you really doing? Can you do both? Can both be excellent? These are the kinds of things that young people are talking about. When you have young people who are doing inquiry-based learning, who are talking about things from their own experiences, and you're pairing it with high-quality, rigorous arts education, this is what you will see. This is a piece that young people did, our young women's organization, Voices Heard in 2015, um, that is called Respect is the Best Compliment. That's about sexual harassment. That's about young women talking about their own personal experiences and then creating this piece of work. We are a community that believes in learning. Um, I just call this book the autobiography. I don't even say the whole thing. Like, I feel like you're about to say the autobiography. You should know I'm talking about the autobiography and not the next. Uh, the foundation of a lot of people who really believe in justice, um, the foundation of that is the Autobiography of Malcolm X. And also, in terms of social justice and social justice pedagogy, Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire. Um, this trilogy by um, Bell Hooks, um, Teaching Community, uh, Teaching Critical Thinking, Teaching to Transgress, um, is another really just wonderful trilogy of work that a lot of us study and love to um, think about how we're using it in our classroom. So I really recommend this trilogy. Anyone who's interested in teaching, or anyone who's interested in how you create strong communities and be a part of strong communities. And I just want to end um, with a picture, an older picture of my son. He's in the audience. He doesn't look like anymore. But, <laughs> but it's the main reason why I do this work. I do this work because I want him to live in a better world. And I do this work because I want everybody to see in him a piece of themselves. And we cannot do that too with dismantle systems of oppression. And if you're interested in learning more about Groundswell, this is our website. We're always looking for volunteers, and thank you all so much.